Hello everyone. Hey, this is John from Tripods Garage. Today I have a, a guest on the line. His name is Sebastian and he's helped do a uh, firmware for the Creality CR6 SE. This is also known as the community firmware. And I felt it was the right thing to do is to invite him on the stream and show how this works. So how the stream is going to go, I'm going to invite Sebastian on in a few seconds. We're going to do an introduction. He's going to uh, tell us a little bit about his background and about the community firmware for the CR6 SE that he developed. And then what we'll do is I have the CR6 right behind me. We're going to do a live upgrade on it through all the steps. Um, and then after that, hopefully everything will go according to plan. We'll have Sebastian do a Q&A and possibly invite a couple of you people on to join the stream live. So without further ado, let me go ahead and add Sebastian to the stream. Hello. Hello. Hi, John. Thanks for having me. Oh, no problem. Uh, first, let's make sure that everyone's able to hear myself and Sebastian. So if everyone could just please uh, say something in the chat. I noticed there's about a 30 second delay between here yeah. and YouTube, so. Uh... Yeah, so, yeah, it would give them some. So David Wilson saying all good. Let's just wait for a couple more. All right. Yeah, so that's why um, I always have a, I, uh, I'm monitoring the stream on separately because of how, what the delay is. So, all right. So, all right, Sebastian, why don't you go ahead and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, um, and what brought you to uh, create the software? Yeah, so uh, I'm an, uh, a software engineer and uh, I work at uh, one of the four large uh, accountancy agencies in the, in the world. And um, I am a, a lucky backer or maybe not, not so lucky of the, of the Creality Kickstarter. <laughs> and um, well, eventually, uh, the first units started arriving in the US, and uh, I saw that the firmware wasn't all too good. I didn't even receive my unit yet, but uh, I think uh, around uh, 20 of September or something, uh, firmware development already began. I didn't even have my own unit yet. That uh, that still took about uh, two, two or three weeks. and. Um, at, uh, at that point, uh, we uh, we already started a bit of uh, development, fixing small bugs, etc. And uh, we already brought uh, out a release on uh, the 21st of uh, September. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if uh, anyone's watched my first Creality review, not the live stream, but the second one, where I actually did the review of it, I did mention Sebastian in there because he did a lot more thorough documentation of the problems of this machine before I even did. And then I saw... Um, just after I released the video, I saw your firmware and then I was like, oh, uh, I did that. I did an another release of um, of replacing the board and then I got a whole bunch of questions about, hey, you're going to talk about this, you know, community firmware. And then I saw, oh, well, <laughs> yeah, this looks really interesting. So if you could um, let us know what are the biggest differences between the community firmware and if are, am i saying it right is it the community firmware because that's what everyone's labeling it and the stock um you know touch screen firmware that comes with the creality unit yeah so uh we eventually started um uh development and we first just uh named the firmware after our uh, three uh, first names of uh of uh, of the of us who try who tried to develop it, um, and eventually it uh, it became called the community firmware. So we just uh, hold on to that uh, that that name essentially. So the biggest difference uh, we did with the community firmware is that well we we focused on stability and added adding adding additional features. So. Um, we essentially rewrote it uh, in, uh, in the Alpha 4 firmware because uh, the code of Creality wasn't really suitable for, for, for integration into uh, a Marlin. 
and that was also one of the the the, the goals we had to to essentially allow it uh, the basic features at least to go back into mainstream Marlin because then it gets maintained there. And if there are any changes that need to happen, then uh, all the Marlin devs can, can refactor it and, and change it uh, as they like, essentially. So um, I should now be sharing my screen, I think. OK, yeah, go ahead and let me uh, add that. So all right. So um, in 4 alpha, I basically did, uh, did the rewrite. And in uh, 5 beta, uh, Grobux came on. And uh, yeah, he essentially redesigned the entire user face to, uh, to, to what it now is. And we, uh, we also expanded it with some, uh, some additional features. So um, we essentially cleaned up the, the user interface. Um, any user of the stock firmware knows the, the ugly buttons with, uh, with JPEG artifacts and uh, little pixels all around. Well, we cleaned that completely up. Um, we added some uh, features like uh, changing uh, the sound uh, uh, mute button and um, adding or and the, configuring the standby time of the screen because some users don't like it in the stock firmware. Other users do like it, and well, if we if we can add an option to it, then uh, then everyone is happy. We uh, revamped the tuning screen. Um, we added an option to set the flow rate, um, and this is a bit of an older screenshot, but we also added um, the fan uh, percentage, so you can. You can now just say fan or on or off, but you can actually set the percentage, which wasn't possible in the, st uh, in the stock firmware. We have also added um, the message that um, that you get from Octoprint, or uh, you can set in Cura for the time left. So you can also show that there. Uh, we also use the native print time of Marlin itself, which also splits up this in days and hours, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we also revamped the bottom of the screen. So we show the positioning of the axis um, and also the current uh, tuning parameters uh, as they are set. And uh, we have uh, added folder support for the SD card because that's also not possible in the stock, uh, stock firmware. So uh, you can now have uh, an uh, endless amount of, uh, of uh, G-code files uh, on your SD card. We have also improved Octoprint support. So um, if you have connected Octoprint, you see the IP address of Octoprint in your home screen. And Octoprint also um, can act on the filament sensor, which is also uh, something that Creality uh, didn't allow in the, in the st stock firmware, essentially because from the Marlin perspective, the filament sensor doesn't exist on the stock firmware. So Octoprint can't, uh, can't essentially do anything with it. Um, and we also did some uh, reliability options because uh, on the previous community firmware, but also on uh, some people have reported it on the stock firmware that the bed leveling isn't all too accurate. And people then start doing things like leveling the gantry, uh, putting aluminum foil under the bed and etc. But Marlin is really able to compensate for 10 millimeters. You ju just should try it and, and try leveling and uh, put a USB stick or something in the one of the leveling points. And if you print then, you will see that the, the head moves up and down. But it's really just an accuracy issue. And through much experimentation and, uh, and trying out, we eventually found out that, that essentially homing and probing slower improves accuracy and also um, turning off the heater while uh, probing because uh, essentially, essentially the 24 signal that goes to, to the heater block that um, that uh, causes issues uh, reading out the strain gouge. So, and we have a list of many more changes here. Uh, Least among this are uh, things like uh, filament change support natively uh, and many more things uh, for the users with a BTT touchscreen. Uh, we added a little extra to the to the Marlin I menu, 
Snake and uh, Breakout. So that's also fun. So uh, yeah, many more things. And uh, yeah, we're now on, uh, on release five beta. So um, we already got some feedback. So uh, working on some things and uh, we also have some uh, pretty fun things, uh, and pretty good things waiting for the next release. Yeah, I can attest to, uh, I don't know if you've watched my last video, even with the upgrade to Big Tree Tech Forward, it didn't, you know, hopefully that solved uh, just uh, some of the smoking issues. But, uh, you know, it's like uh, with the leveling, I'm, it's still not that great. So let's uh, see what happens when we install this, uh, my uh, CR6 SE. So, but yeah, it's a, it's that's a nice laundry list of uh, upgrades and, um when most of the time when these it seems like when these manufacturers release releases a touchscreen interface is that they become more customer focused like uh, just regular not and they lose the um the hobbyist you know the tinkerer side and they just put the minimal stuff in there so you get minimal questions you know that's the way i look at it when you have the classic marlin interface with everything you know there's they're like oh i think an average customer that just like me when i first got into it like uh um, just over a year ago, I didn't know about the classic Marlin interface. I just knew of the, you know, the Ender 5 Plus touchscreen. I'm like, oh, it has a touchscreen. Oh, and it's got a really big build volume. I'm sold. So, and, you know, once I did the Big Tree Tech Ultimate upgrade on mine, totally gutted the whole thing. And, and then I had, the, I use my classic Marlin display now more than I do the touchscreen interface. So, yeah, I, I think it's, um, for it, the the, the touchscreens they put on the printers they look good for review but mm -hmm. when you all actually start going a level deeper then you're only going to hit frustration yeah. and i frankly don't think reality needs to do that no. um uh, we have uh, these f past few months we have quite some experience also with uh, changing the touchscreen and um uh, you can't really work together on it. You you must have one single code base, and that's really difficult. If you if one wants to change one thing, and uh, and uh, and I want to to change an, uh, a different pattern, so yeah. Um, and everything, of course, needs to be built manually for the for, for the touchscreen. When you when you just put a classic display on the on the printer, then it's uh, it's. It seems old-fashioned, but the yeah, user yeah. can can do anything with it. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, I think you hit it right on the head. Is that uh, it seems old-fashioned when you're seeing a click wheel, thumb wheel, versus uh, you know people are used to seeing a GUI interface, and it's you know it's like why, why would I want to have a classic Marlin when I can have this beautiful touchscreen interface instead? But it's just like the Ender 5 Plus. This I knew this one, right? when they first introduced it, it was going to be very capped and limited because they're starting to target a, a specific user market with this machine. At least that's the way I felt is because, you know, it, it, honestly, the hardware looks very refined. It looked great. I praised it for literally over half my, my review, well over half of it. And then it just, I, then I showed my concerns. So, but, uh, so I'm new to this this firmware i've i've only been for the last couple months have been watching it on reality's uh facebook groups just watching okay and, and i hit your website a couple of times however i honestly did not read any of it i i did use your website though when you did the on my on my review because you laid it out so beautifully you know <laughs> and i want to give you credit for this just like i want to give you credit for this you know I want to I want to introduce you. I want to go ahead and we'll use my machine. I just inserted an SD card, so let's uh you know before we go, let's see if there's any questions in the chat. Um, typically, I think everyone's obeying by the little bit of rules I have on here, so it's just everyone's saying hi to each other. So I'm gonna have a few questions um, about the. It looks like a CR6 Max. Um, if now, do you have a specific firmware for that one? Yeah, so um, we have here all the firmware, firmwares listed for the supported uh, hardware configurations. So we have for the Big Tree Tech SKR CR6 and uh, the Big Tree Tech uh, TFT. 
we have it for the uh, CR6 with the stock reality screen, which, which is your printer. Um, we have the Max, and we have the two variants of the CR6 SE with the two motherboards. And uh, recently I learned that uh, there's yet another motherboard for the CR6 SE, but yeah. um, we, ha we, we don't have source code of that. So we also can't support or try, uh, try to support it be because yeah, we need to know how it works on, under the covers. Of course, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it'll be nice if, um, since uh, you know this is one thing that becomes um, pretty crucial for these manufacturers and suppliers to be like, hey, we got somewhere in this community that's trying to improve our product. Let's get them that board ahead of time, pre-release, because I think that's what, you know, they claim to be open source, right? So let's help them. This is what helps the community grow. It's stuff like what you're doing in my eyes, you know? Yeah. So. And, and, and frankly, I don't know what Creality is doing because they have now three boards for the same printer. Yeah. Um, and the, the user and friendly thing about it is that firmware from one board doesn't work for the, for the other, because for instance, if you install the uh, this firmware on the other board, then you can't heat. Or if you if you try to uh, home the nozzle drive into the bed, so it's really a mess at the, at the moment. But uh, so at least from the, from the boards. firmware perspective, we try to uh, to do what we can. So they have three boards, and then I have. So if you really want, then you have my BTT board. So there's basically four boards for this machine. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and you yeah, could I, theoretically. I gave up right away. Yeah, and you could theoretically put the uh, BTT uh, SCAR board in the CR6 Max as well. So we could end up with uh, with about uh, eight hardware configurations. <laughs> oh my gosh! And you know what? And you know, it's you know, I don't want anyone to take this. You know, this is something that I won't do anymore. Is a backer of something like this. You know, I I was an early adopter of the um, Ender 5 Plus, and I was the first person to discover the power supply was very inadequate and mine burned up. And then I got this one. So I, I'm now gonna sit back and wait <laughs> for um, for some stuff to iron out. It's like buying the first generation of a car and you know, right off the showroom floor, the first one that comes off the line, you know it's gonna possibly have a little bit of issues, right? So it's nothing that we don't see in almost any production space, right? So, um, so now, uh, the chats uh, died down a little bit. We have 47 people watching. I really appreciate it. So, Sebastian, I'm a new person. I'm really excited to use your software. I just inserted a brand new SD card, 128 gig, right into my machine. I just formatted to to um, fat. So, where do I go? What what do I do next? Okay, let's first. Um check which, which file we need. So we uh, go to, to the file listing and then we can pick uh, the correct download, which will be this one for you. All right, so let me go onto your website here. So um, let's see here. And you, you supplied that in the stream, right? So let me go to your site. It says, hello, I'm Sebastian. And so you have these posts in your site. So if you want to just share that screen, how do I navigate to where you're at, at in your site from the one that you supplied in the, in my uh, YouTube stream? Yeah, so uh, you have here the link to the community firmware. Okay. And this is in the post that's that's about the how you can compile it yourself if you want to tweak some parameters or just tinker with it. Yeah, so that'll be, so yeah. right now that throws me into yeah, so you can. Uh, okay, so yeah, I yeah. yeah, you have it. You have yours in black. Uh, yeah. So okay, so you're so I'm on your GitHub then right now. Uh, not your Git. Yeah, your GitHub, right? Yeah. So uh, you have here the the README that uh, that tells you uh, a bit uh, about uh, the source code and where you can download it and what are the purpose of essentially our community firmware is and um, how you can report issues, etc. And you have here the link to the download section. All right, let me uh, navigate there. Give me one second. Downloads. All right, so I see uh, it says development and compile it. Your, oh, wait, downloads. Okay. Um, I see that support for BTT SKR board is experimental. 
So we all have to make sure, like on every YouTube video of mine, I have a disclaimer. So it's always good to have one. So, um, so is that the one that I'm going to click on from for myself? Yeah. So you you have so click on release section, right? Yes, a, exactly. Right. So I'm going to click on there. And, and we then, have the entire listing of uh, of everything that's changed. And if you navigate down entirely to the assets section, you will eventually find the downloads here. All right. So and I, I and I wish this this user interface was a bit better, but that's uh, well, it's GitHub. So yeah, and honestly, yours is a lot better than mine. I haven't even bothered to try to. Um, when I saw your GitHub, I'm like, man, yours is beautiful. Mine is. They look for my GitHub for my uh, uh, Enterfi Plus firmware. I'm like, uh, and I just shoved the link. I'm like, it's somewhere <laughs> embedded. Here it is. <laughs> so, all right. So I got to look for, um, right under some final notes. So let me just do a find for that instead. All right. So some final notes. And then um, if I scroll. All right. So let me go back to you. And download. <laughs> Hold on. Am I even in the right spot here? Hold on. I'm looking here. I see the file listings. I'm just looking for the downloaded links here. Okay. I see your uh, your BTT SKR CR6 boards with your cone. Community uh, comparison firmware. All right. So I see your file listings. There, you want me just to share my screen so you can see what yes, I'm looking yes. at? All right. Well, let me break this off. I got a lot of windows open here, so bear with me. All right. I know that mine is not, not as dark as hers. I don't, you know, this is a PC, so. All right, so as you see, I'm in the FAQ section right here. All right, so where do I go from here? So you then scroll, you first check uh, which file you need. You can read it uh, here, that's, uh, so that's indeed the CF5 beta, BTT, SQR, CR6, etc. Okay, so that'll be this, uh, was stock, so I see that you have two. So I, I take this first one, right? Yes, or no, this is the second one. Second one? All right, so this is the one I'm going to, to want. And so where do I grab this file right here? Yes. So if I scroll over, so how do I download this one? Where do I go? So you go to the assets section down below. It's after the, the FAQ. That's too far. Nope. A little bit up. Just above. Uh, oh. A little bit up. Yeah, here. All right. So you have the asset section here. You need to click that open because we have a lot of files. So apparently GitHub doesn't show it by default. Okay. So. You so uh, asset section. So you got contributing. You have downloads below, and just below that, you can click on assets with the the, the twelve number. I'm sorry, I'm kind of not seeing it here. Right in the middle of your screen. I can see the community Discord. Again, pick your correct branch, and, and then please check homepage. So and a little bit below that. You have assets. Oh, 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 there it is. Okay. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, I was looking we for... can't fix it. We can't fix <laughs> GitHub. <laughs> no, no, that, no, that's fine. So this is again. I I purposely did not navigate on here for this, right? So this is this hopefully helps out a lot of people. So perfect. It's fine. 
So, and then I'll be taking this one, right? Yes. All right, so I'm downloading it right here. All right, so what I'm gonna do um, is, I assume everyone knows how to unzip a file, so I'm gonna do this offline here. I notice it has a really long naming convention. Do I need to, is it best to change it? No, it's just a uh, descriptive name for the for the okay. zip file. Okay, so it won't matter. Downloads, documents. So in the zip file, you'll find an uh, readme.txt, which contains some short instructions that uh, tell you to go back to the release notes for the final uh, flashing instructions. The zip file contains a description.txt, so you can verify you have the correct package because uh, you can't uh, flash a BTT firmware to a an, uh, an stock reality board or vice versa. And if you have a um, uh, touchscreen uh, uh, package, then uh, the touchscreen will be there as well. Of course, if you flash with a BTT TFT, then you just uh, got to use the, the stock BTT uh, touchscreen. But you have the Creality display, so yeah. you need that uh, zip file as well. All right. Where is my... Okay, hold on one second. Let me go ahead and throw this on my desktop. That way I'll just share my desktop screen and everyone can see it. So what's all that important with, uh, at least when you use a stock display is that you always use the same firmware that uh, comes with it because um, Essentially, when we change something on the screen, when we say, uh, well, uh, we have this new button, then uh, uh, it needs to be on the screen, but the firmware also needs to listen to that when the screen says, hey, the user t touched this button. So that's why we, uh, why we also, also uh, 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 distribute this together. The previous release for Alpha release was really also a uh, good learning experience at our side because many people didn't understand that they needed to, to get the firmware somewhere else. So we now have integrated in the same package. And we've also greatly improved uh, the README uh, when it comes to flashing the touchscreen. All right. Let me uh, go ahead and stop sharing this and I'll share my desktop now. got a warning message on my background. There we go. No one wants to see that I haven't updated my HP drivers. So now we'll share. Firmware. All right. 
All right, so I have my file explorer open and All right, so here is your unzipped file right here. So here's the readme that you were talking about. And so make sure you download the correct package. Did you take the correct package? Yeah, yeah this uh, should be it. Because it was the... Uh, So if I go, if I share that uh, screen here, hold on. I, uh, yeah, I downloaded the uh, CF5 beta BTT SKR CR6 with stock reality TFT 2020. That was the one that I. Okay. Uh, so if I yeah. click on the description, right? Yeah, you you also need to make sure you have unzipped the, the touch screen. Uh, uh, zip package. There's also a touch screen zip file in there. All right, so let me go ahead and find that one. So let me share this screen. All right, so so now I'm back on the screen again. So I already downloaded this one. Yes. And then I'm going to. And the zip file with, with the touch screen firmware is in that zip file. It's inside. Oh, oh so it's file. within there. Okay. Yeah. So let me double check here because. Oh, okay. Let me. Okay, so I extracted, I see what it did. It extracted that one, and then it has another zip that you extract as well. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. So let me create a new folder. Call it touch screen. Now I'll share it with everyone here. And I'll move those files in there. All right. So desktop. All right, so let me share this screen and then we'll proceed forward. All right, now you can see my screen now? Yeah. All right, so I have uh, two of them. I have the firmware right here. And then I have the touch screen. So uh, yeah, um, inside the touch screen folder, the uh, firmware zip file is, uh, is there's also a dwin underscore set folder if okay. you if you've e extracted everything. Okay, so I just moved that there. So I want to make yeah. sure that's okay. So uh, you have a uh, micro SD card, right? Yeah, I have it right here. Okay, then you uh, need to format that. In a oh, sorry. very specific way, otherwise the touchscreen doesn't like it. All right, so if I uh, format, yeah. So right now it's on the, this ex fat. Yeah, I, that doesn't work. Okay, that's so, why I thought it was probably gonna be what fat thirty two or something. Yeah, you need to um, uh, format it as fat thirty two. Yeah. Um, it's perhaps also good to. Uh, I think we also have it in the in the manual, but um, you need to set it to uh, uh, 4069 uh, sector size here. Yeah. Okay. And you can do this from the command line, or you can just do it from Windows uh, Explorer, just uh, format. 
All right, so um, let's see here. So with this, give me one second. Let me, uh, I have to actually go into hard drive manager, I believe on here to be able to do that. Um, And uh, it's unfortunate, unfortunate that Creality chose a touchscreen that's that picky because really many users are are hitting this because then they are flashing the touchscreen um, and they, they find out it's, it isn't working or it's only working half or... Yeah. It's you really know, I mean, a pain, but we can't do anything about that, unfortunately. Well, yeah, unfortunately, it's also a lot of cameras. You still use, you know, FAT32. And natively within Windows 10, it doesn't allow that. So hold on, I think there's a way to do it though. Um, let's see if we go to, give me one second. I think that on the on the Macintosh that that uh, that fla that uh, formatting the SD card is the most pain because you can't actually do it visually, but on Windows you can do it from uh, from Windows Explorer. But yeah, Windows Explorer doesn't give you that. So I know I you know I have two Macs. I think okay, I if it doesn't Mac if it doesn't yeah. give you that, you, then your SD card is too large. Okay, you need yeah, to take a smaller SD card. Yeah, let me do that. I got plenty of them, so let me eject it and then try it. And because we also know how many uh, great uh, SD cards they supply. So essentially, once you have formatted the SD card, you take the folder, you put it on your SD card, and then uh, the real fun begins. All right, so I'm just grabbing an 8 gig. I'll just wipe it. I don't care what's on it. No. Oh. My that's for my ENAP Pro for who cares? <laughs> All right, so let's see if this will work. Come on. Format. All right, so we've got that nice little drop downs here, FAT32, and you want 4096, right? Yes, exactly. Yes. Quick format. Yeah, so destroy. Absolutely. Format complete. All right, so let me switch back to my screen now. All right, so now I have, let's go back to desktop. All right, so now I have my touchscreen and I have um, my firmware folders, these two. So, yeah. so now my, my card's formatted per your requirements. Yeah, so you then take the, the DWIN set folder and you put it on the SD card. Okay. Just the folder itself, not the contents, just the entire folder. Yep. So it's so on the root this. of the SD card. Yeah. And you can do the same with the uh, with firmware.bin uh, dot file. 
And everyone can see my screen, right? Yeah. All right. Okay. Ran the root, right? Yeah. So if you go, now go to the SD card, yeah, yeah, you have this. Okay, that's it. Then you can uh, safely eject it from Windows, and then uh, we can uh, go to the printer, I guess. All right, this is the part we're all waiting for, right? So let me switch. I have my camera already set right here, and I'm going to switch to my other computer as well. It pays being in IT, having like 16 computers in the house. So, so let me. All right. All right. So, ooh. now let's try that again. Yeah, that's Let me better. Turn up the volume up one. All right. Can everyone hear me on this one? Yeah, it's a little bit yeah, hard. Uh, uh, here, how about now? All right. All right. So. All right. right. So. Ooh. Hold on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep this muted, and so we don't get that nice echo. Now and let's try that again. All right, I figured the problem. The stream was running on the background on this one. So, everyone hear, hear me okay now? Yeah. All right. Let me go ahead and eject the card. And it's, uh, so, what we now can do is uh, either flash the touch screen first or flash the printer first. Um, in this case, it doesn't really matter. Um, let's do the printer first, so we can at least check that it's flashed cor correctly. Okay. So I just assume that we're going to oh, move the camera back a little bit. So you just put the SD card in the printer okay. and then uh, just take out turn, the... it, turn it on. All right, so just going to eject it. And we're going to put the new one in. Yeah. And if you are having Creality board, you won't see any indication that it's flashing, other than that it takes uh, takes a few seconds. But if you have the BTT board and uh, the LED hasn't still broken off uh, of your hot head, hot end, then you uh, see the LED flashing when you turn on the printer. All right. So everyone ready for this? Let's yes. give it a try. So you see the LED flashing now? Yep. It's now flashing. Oh, okay. That's a interesting. That's a, ni that's a nice touch of BTT because you yeah. then know it's doing something. And I understood that for from people who who uh, did the wrong firmware, uh, then that that just uh, keeps flashing. All right. Okay. So right now, you see that the flash firmware is flash because it can't can't display the version because yep. that's changed on the touch screen. Okay. So we can now turn off the printer again and then. Uh, yeah, you need to uh, take the touchscreen off the printer, and you can just uh, use one of the included Allen uh, keys for that. And I'm it's going a bit to... of a pain, but yeah. if you're not actually developing the the firmware, then it's it's quite alright, I think. And even uh, even I uh, I haven't purchased uh, purchased a uh, micro SD adapter, so. Uh, I'm also uh, all the time taking off my touch screen and flashing it and then putting it pu putting it back, back again. All 
I, I like that screen, that uh, LED flashing. I think that's that's definitely uh, is a nice touch, you know, because I'll be like, whoa, what's happening? If I didn't know that, that's what um, it was doing. Yeah, and you, and you, and we we noticed that on reality boards sometimes it uh, doesn't flash at all. Like, um, what, what either can happen is that it it just entirely ignores the firmware file. Or it flashes it, but it, it just flashes it uh, for fifty percent, and then Marlin doesn't boot, and then it's uh, well, my printer isn't booting. So I'm so gonna yeah. off off screen. I'm gonna just remove these four screws, just letting everyone know, because I'm yep. at a weird angle. Yeah, I did kind of gripe about how my uh, my screen is off center from my bezel too. Yeah, and, and we actually uh, took that uh, into account developing the touchscreen firmware so that everything is shifted uh, left four pixels to account oh, for, for reality uh, putting on the, the plastic of the touchscreen wrong. You know, you know, people are like, you're just being really critical. I'm like, no, I, it's, you know, I, I tried to bring it to the, you know, the car comparison. It's okay that then that I have a car brand new that the window wipers work once in a while then, right? So, <laughs> I mean, it's, or that, you know, I can only see, you know, I can't see all the display of my, of my radio, but you know what? It's fine. I can see most of the numbers. <laughs> so. So, uh, when you have to cover off, you can put in, you have a uh, little micro SD card slot at the bottom of the touch screen. And I don't, I could just keep that same SD card in there. Uh, yeah, I don't yeah. touch anything. Okay, perfect. So you put the SD card in there and then uh, you reconnect the touch screen, but don't assemble it yet. Oh no, I, I kind of learned my lesson with that stuff. Yeah, if you ever watched my uh, ultimate upgrade um, you know, for the under five plus that video, I had about, you know, 10 hours worth of footage on that I had to condense into an hour and a half. I can tell you how long that thing was apart that I was messing around with Marlin and everything else with the thing. All right. So the back is off. So I'm going to yeah. take the card out and then I can take it out of its little reader right here. And then so, and it's right here. Sorry, let me center it. And then, let's see. Oh, don't tell me it's under from underneath. Oh. No, 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 you can, yeah, it's a bit finicky to, to get your fingers right, but you can, uh, you can do it. Um, it's really fun when you develop the firmware. If you want. Like, Ari, that's you. very to steal. Sorry. There we go. Is that okay now? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I already uh, broke the seal around the display because I took it off when I noticed that the pixels didn't line up. All right, so I nailed it in. Now it's. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, and then you can attach the, the serial cable, and then you need to put the touchscreen somewhere so it doesn't accidentally short on the on the aluminum extrusions. Yeah, so, so you can uh, just put it to the side or on the bed or something like that. Or we just do it like that. All right, so now I just turn it on? Yeah. All right, let's see what happens. For development, I just yanked the, the, the serial cable out of the display, but I wouldn't re necessarily recommend that actually for oh. uh, for end users to flash it. Oh, for safety reasons, I did unplug it. So. Yeah, but I <laughs> for development, I just keep the printer on. But yeah. All right. So you can see here. Oh, hold on. It is up. Dating. Hold on. Let me. Yeah. So it's now updating. Should have used. And it, it, this takes uh, a minute or so. And it will show all kinds of uh, file extensions, ICL, bin, etc., etc., with some numbers behind it. And if the numbers show all zero, then then you uh, probably haven't uh, gotten an uh, SD card that's co formatted correctly. 
And yeah, we also noticed that sometimes the touchscreen simply doesn't like the SD card and you just need to find a uh, different one. Look, at Andrew's just showing the love on my, my stream, isn't he? This guy's done nothing but trash the CR6 community. No, I trashed the, the printer, not the community, the printer. Andrew. No, you, you got a choice. You can not watch this at all. So, all right. If it, it now shows uh, end, if I read it correctly. Uh, no, it doesn't say end yet. It's well, it says well, it says yes. Oh, so you're talking about the files at zero zero zero? It's showing all zero. Yeah. Okay, then you prove every file shows zero on the. Well, well, no, so it's, it went from zero zero one three, and, and then another three zero zero zero, and then zero zero one zero zero five. Okay, no, no, that's fine. Yeah. So you the 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 second line from the top of the display now shows end. Uh, I think. Yes, and the very top. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So now it's uh, it has uh, flashed correctly, so we can now just um, uh, turn the printer off and uh, remove the SD card. Okay. And because flashing is such a pain, I do recommend that you uh, just then turn the printer on again and then just quickly hop into the control menu and uh, check if uh, if the firmware f version is shown. All right. And if it isn't shown, then we will just flash it again. All right. So I'm gonna, I just unplugged it. All right. So now we're going to plug it back. And I just undid the card, plugged the cable back in. And Okay, and then we go to the to the info menu, control, then info. Oh, there we go. Yeah, here we Beautiful. go. Okay, good. Then uh, you can turn off the printer and uh, remount the touchscreen. I have to say that is a very simple process, Sebastian. Very simple. Well, it's actually actually far more complicated than I like, but. Uh, it's what we have. Yeah. There, there should actually be a way to update the touchscreen directly from the motherboard firmware, but I haven't looked into that yet, and I'm also afraid of breaking my own touchscreen, and that would be a bit of a pain given uh, yeah. the firmware development. All right, so let me go ahead and assemble everything off screen now. Hey, Red, how you doing? Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a shame that people, you know, I, I try to be honest with everything that I do, you know, and some people, you know, take it the wrong way, like Andrew did, you know, they don't, I, again, I purchased something, and I just want it to work. I don't understand why people can't agree with that, you know, it's fine. I mean, people are entitled to their own opinion, but if they want to pay for products, that still clearly have an issue even today, you, you could just go, Brianna, people can just go right onto Creality's Facebook group and see it. It's for everyone to see, you know? I mean, well, I'm a bit of in the middle of this because um, on one hand, um, it is a cheap Chinese product, so there mm -hmm. will also always be some concessions, like, um, like the 10 filament sensor that isn't aligned with the extruder. So you, you have a really, uh, a really fun time loading filament. 
that kind of thing you can expect. But I think I think Reality did drop the ball on the on the on the USB issues. Because there yeah. have been people who, who just blow, blew up their PC by connecting it to the printer. And they blew up the printer too. And the board inside the hot end. So, yeah, Creality really dropped the ball there. Yeah, and that's the thing. is I expect little things like you said. There's going to be some precision issues, stuff like that. You know, this is still uh, north of the machine when it was, it was projected to be over $400. Still, for me... In my, you know, in my family, that's a lot of money to part away and part ways with. So, you know, and it's, I don't know, it's it's a shame that, you know, we can't let companies get away, especially with something like that, with what's happening with this machine, with the board, and like what you said, it's literally messing up people's computers along with the board itself, right? So, yeah, while well, developing um, or supporting the Alpha 4 firmware, my, uh, my Creality board actually died. So, that was a nice surprise. So, I had to fix some bugs and then ask people, well, I can test it, but can you test it, please? And, uh, and that went all right. But uh, my printer was still down for a month or so because uh, before I got an, uh, a real uh, BTT board. So, uh, yeah, luckily not, nothing blew up. My, my board was just bricked, but um, it wasn't due to the firmware. I just had finished the print, uh, the printer froze, I rebooted it and it never booted again. So yeah, bad luck, I guess. Yeah, I, once I saw that, like Joe Telling, so it's okay for Joe Telling to say something, but it's not okay because I have a lower subscriber community, you know? So for him to say, Oh, look, I plugged in my computer and now it's smoking. So it's okay for him to say something. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, Sebastian, th this is a beautiful display. Okay. You, uh, hats off to you. Hats off to you. <laughs> uh, all thanks to, uh, to Growbrox uh, and, uh, and also some feedback from, uh, from our Discord members uh, that, uh, that uh, gave some feedback on the, on the pre-releases. And I also have to thank our Discord members who uh, in the pre-release channel did, uh, did some pre-release testing before we finally uh, shipped 5.8 five beta. But uh, yeah, we have uh, already some fun things waiting for the next release. So uh, I've already mocked up some things in, uh, in Comic Sans and uh, etc. And uh, Grobox is now uh, designing those screens. All right, so what I'm going to do is, um, so there's been some, let me ask you, and the, and people are watching. Creality, when they, when they do the leveling, it automatically heats up the hot end if you hit level. There's some people that say that's good and you don't have to heat up the bed. You know, pr typically you would heat, off, heat up both the hot end and the bed, right, before you level the bed, right? What is your recommendation here before I hit prepared? Should I go ahead and heat up both or should I just do the prepare the um, level no you should first reset to factory settings um, if you go to control and then hit uh, reset to factory settings because then uh, you know that uh, all the defaults have been loaded and uh, no old um, defaults are remaining because without this uh, all bets are essentially off because Marlin's changes and some defaults we have changed uh, are different. But now you can just go to level and uh, auto level the bed and it will automatically heat up. So let me get a wider shot of this. So, sorry about this. I'm gonna try to get them both in the camera shot here. I didn't hook up. I already have four cameras running. I didn't want to hit, hit number the fifth one. So let me see what I can do here. So I'm going to do, what I'll do is here is, uh, so I'm going to hit this button right here. It says auto level, right? Okay, so now it's saying heating and homing in process. Yeah, so what we always do is um, we also home with the heaters on. 
And that's for two reasons. It's one, so that everything is consistent. And uh, two, that if you happen to have some filament stuck to the nozzle, well, at 120 C, uh, uh, then it's pretty much soft. So it won't affect the leveling too much. And what you also see that th is that when it starts moving to the bed, then you will see that, that the heaters are actually turned off and that's to in improve that accuracy. Okay. Because I, at one point, uh, I just started having a drif drifting Z offset and many users too. And yeah, that essentially fixed it. Because when you say to, to uh, Marlin, uh, well, let's heat up to, uh, to 200 degrees Celsius or to, to 120 degrees Celsius. Then Marlin just, it, it doesn't just uh, turn the heater on, it actually sends some PWM sing signal to the heater so that it essentially turns the heater on, off, on, off, on, off. So it um, doesn't get too hot and it maintains temperature. But um, on the same, uh, PCB uh, at the hot end, the uh, strain gouge is an analog signal and that's read by an, uh, a little processor on the PCB. But that that heating of the hot end can actually influence how that signal is read. So that's the reason uh, we turn off the heaters. <laughs> RB is on. He's saying, it was, I just, uh, what do you say in the chat? I just arranged pixels. <laughs> so Baz has done all the biggest work. So you're far too modest. All right. So, <laughs> so we can see how you change the orientation here and how it levels versus um, how Crowdy was just doing it back and forth. Yeah, I think it was uh, from front to back to back to front, but that's yeah. just a minor de minor detail. So it's now heating up. Yeah, it just hit 120, and now we're watching it. I think this is a pretty good angle. You can see the screen and the printer going at the same time. You know, again, I I still like this printer, people. I do. It's my go-to printer. It was the safety and the lack of accountability that was the biggest concern with me for this printer. Okay. I, you know, this was going to be my second and last printer before I got my CNC machine and my laser in, uh, printer uh, uh, engraver. So, because I already had the Ender 5 Plus, it's oh, it's practically done. I got maybe like two more upgrades I want to do to it, personal upgrades, but it's where I want it to be. It's running perfect. It was going to be me, you know, small volume printer, right? And then I you know, get my workflow going with a CNC machine and a laser engraver. I mean, the, the the build quality of this for this type of machine, I haven't seen anything better looking out there, you know? So it's, uh, you know, it, it's built nice. <laughs> so Yeah, the, the, the CR6 is really built for the looks too. Yeah. With those. Mm -hmm. um... Now, I, I did add some uh, gaffers tape to the back here. Because that, that the whole everything was just dragging on the bed, and that kind of like helped. So, yeah, I did a mod that uh, that the entire hot end cable actually runs to the side because uh, I didn't like how it was uh, bent that way. Because the the hot end uh, goes from left to right, left to right, and then you have a flat cable. But a flat cable isn't supposed to uh, to have that kind of torsion. It's need. It's only supposed to bend in one direction. So I was worried for the long long levity of my pr printer. Now, there's one thing I forgot to mention <laughs> in my um, BTT upgrade for this printer is that. I cannot get it to hot identify the card when I plug it in. So let's see if it works. <laughs> so, is, that a, is that a stock uh, card that came with your printer? Yeah. Yeah, you can just throw that in the trash because um, that card is going to die sooner, sooner or later. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I have a whole collection of, of, of Samsung 
uh, car. Yeah, cards that's that better. I because you know, I, I, had, I, I, I had it with, with both of my printers. Both cards eventually died. It started with random corruption issues, and then eventually it's unusable. Uh, so David Wilson has a question. Is this slower than the stock firmware? Yeah, it's definitely slower, but it's on the um, it's essentially uh, a trade-off on accuracy, and I think that trade-off is um, is a good trade-off because you don't need to level every time you print. Uh, you just level once, and then you can print uh, print immediately, and it will just recall the mesh every time. Yeah, uh, there will be a, a giveaway at the end of this. Um, I did note it down at the beginning of the chat. So it'll be uh, I'll be giving away personally a a BTT CR6 SE board. So that'll be at the end of the stream, and you you know it had to be in the chat to win. So so it's just me giving back a little bit. So. Yeah, that you know that was very simple. You know, you have you upgrade both off of one card. You know, the files are there, and you know what I mean. What after I downloaded the files and actually theoretically downloaded the files, unzipped them, put them on the card, and put it on this machine, it's probably a less than a ten minute upgrade. Yeah, the the most um, invisible detail to get right is to really get that card format formatted correctly. Mm -hmm. And actually, with Windows, if you have a small card, like you said, actually that's the default that default option. So, yeah, I um, yeah, Chris uh, Kersey was building the CR6 uh, Max, and his card was dead. <laughs> so right out, right out of the box. So. Yeah, many people have uh, have had that issue. You know, it's, you know what? Yeah. It's only a big, big card. You could get a reputable brand for these things for dirt cheap. Yeah, I understand it's high volume, saving pennies where you can. I get that. No one in manufacturing doesn't get that point, right? You 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 save where you can. So, um, but that could just ruin it for someone <laughs> just by having a card fail on you. Yeah, right. and I and I and I do like that it's in a full size SD card because yeah. that uh, that's just a, a bit more usable. Okay, so now we have uh, leveled, and you can now uh, just press home, and then we can uh, go and set the Z offset. All right, so and so because I'll see the Z here and here, so but I hit home. Yeah, you first need to home. And if you remember the, the Z offset from your previous uh, leveling, you can start from there. I think mine was a, a 0.15 or 0.2. But it will probably not exactly be the same. Yeah. It may be a bit higher, it may be a bit lower. Now, when you when you uh, are going to adjust the Z offset, you don't want to uh, immediately press it down within a few seconds to uh, within a second to uh, 0 0.15 because the the EEPROM is quite slow in saving it. So you need to uh, to do it gently. So, um, Carmel Sack, I consider the BT board a upgrade versus just a replacement. It does offer a little bit more. Um, to give you a understanding, I got a. Um, hopefully, I'm one of my next videos. I got a uh, the BTT what uh, four inch display to mount to it. So, I want to give that a run. I see that uh, um, Sebastian has already kind of beaten me to that because it does have a header on there to use a different display. So, yeah. Yeah, and the BTT board is definitely an upgrade. Um, I I did have to solder my first one because it actually had a short. 
But on the other hand, the board didn't blew up once I uh, uh, did the soldering. And I never soldered a circuit board like that before, but I did manage to do it anyway. And I shortly got a replacement after that. But uh, the board did blew, did not blew up. So that's also something to say. But for instance, I'm now mounting an uh, MBQ uh, H2 uh, direct drive extruder to my printer. And in the guidance of that is, uh, is for instance, uh, oh, you need to put um, 800 milliamps of, um, of uh, uh, pressure on the, on the extruder. You can just do that. So with your up and down on here, um, so is the gantry going up if I hit plus, or is it going, is the nozzle coming down if I hit plus? No, it's, uh, it's coming down when you, uh, when you hit minus and it's going up when you hit plus. Okay, so I need to, so it, as you said, oh, so right now, if I, So right now, if I'm hitting level and I try to rehome it again, because if I I don't see the offset moving right no, now. No, neither do I. That's a bit odd. It here, you know what? Let me um let me turn it off real quick. Let me turn it back on, and I'll hit home. and see what happens. I, I, you know, I, I love soldering. It's just, I was a um, certified at it, and I, um, it's very relaxing for me. I could so I, I could just solder a whole board all day. It was like uh, back in the day when I used to draw. Just uh, there we go. Well, I noticed that my bed's cooled down. So shouldn't I heat that back up? Or my nozzle? No, it's not very important right now. So this should be raising my, my gantry up by doing negative, right? If you go negative, then the, the nozzle will, uh, moves down. It essentially uh, oh. works just like uh, baby stepping. Okay, so I actually need to go up because I can't get my paper underneath. Correct? Yeah. You may need to actually home it because because, they, because, because you of course uh, have uh, turned the printer uh, on our oh, sorry, just again. again. What we got 3D medic in the house? It's up 3D. So could we start at hot end and specific temperatures and not have always running on like the original 4.5.2? So let's see. Uh, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. Um, um, the, the hot end fan is not uh, controlled by software, so we can't actually influence it. I've had an yeah. uh, ANET ET4 Pro, and that was a bit more intelligent about the hot end fan because that that hot end fan only t turned on uh, at 50 degrees or so. But uh, this hot end fan will uh, will always stay on. But given the motherboard issues uh, of this printer, it uh, it also shows uh, that the printer is actually alive. So that's also a good thing, I guess. Yeah, it's uh, the it's on the always on pins on the board. Yeah. Yeah, but you can replace it. Um, I think uh, I uh, today I saw a uh, uh, kit from uh, Sweden that allowed um, setting the, the hot end fan. So Hmm. 
that. It's unfortunate, unfortunate that uh, 3D uh, printing manufacturers still uh, put 24 full uh, fans uh, on everything because I think they're probably making their own lives difficult as well because 24 fold fans are pretty difficult to uh, to source at least if you want quiet ones ah, there we go finally all right now let's start lowering it So Don Alber is saying, uh, I'm excited about the release. We'll have retraction in the touchscreen. Yeah, so for the next release, we will uh, add a feature that will allow you to override the slicer retractions. And that's pretty fun because you can just um, start a print with an, uh, a stringing test, for instance. And then you can adjust the, the retractions as you go. So dialing in a new fur new filament that may be a bit stringy is is as easy as that you can live adjust the the retractions and uh immediately see the result of that now you said there was a de delay of going up and down right yeah okay so i'm gonna let that sit for a second because it might be going too fast because all of a sudden I, I saw there was a noticeable gap. So I'm going to give it a couple seconds, let it catch up, and then I'll continue on. Well, it's more that if you keep pressing uh, down quite fast, um, the print effect really sets. It's an issue that was uh, unfortunately not, not catched in the, in the pre-release -re testing, but some users have, uh, have found out that it uh, effect really sets uh, if you uh, very quickly... Uh, just to see offset. Oh. Just, there we go. I think that's perfect. Just enough of a grab on that piece of paper. For the next release, we also have uh, a built-in guided e-step calibration. So you can say, uh, well, I've uh, marked my filament at uh, 100 millimeters, and uh, I'm going to uh, uh, extrude 80 millimeters. And then it asks you to measure the filament, and then uh, it calculates the e-steps for you. So that's uh, also a pretty fun feature. Ah, I'm glad that you're having a relaxing Sunday. For once, I'm not actually working. I, I usually I work seven days a week, so. All right, so I'm at a 0 0.13. I hit home just again, just to you know, see if everything locked in. Oh. Huh. Let's go up again. All right, let me uh, plug in the SD card and see what happens here. Oh, so. Apparently that works because uh, um, that didn't show up before when I would uh, when I did my first upgrade. I had to turn off the machine and then turn it back on to see the files. So, so let's see. Should we do it? You know what? I didn't even clean this bed yet. So if it fails off here, I'll clean the bed. So, okay. So, but I'll let this go real quick. The dog one. So it's pretty nice. It says you want to confirm printing from card. So I'm going to hit yes. And this 
is what I love about it. I love all the information you're showing here. Yeah, it's one. Of, it was one of the I think uh, several days before release that we uh, that we uh, changed this to also to display some more of the information. And it's also always useful to 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 be able to adjust your flow rate too, because some filaments just need a little bit of extra help to uh, to extract well. And. Uh to me, it's like a car, I keep on referring to a car, a car that just only has a speedometer versus having other gauges. Like my wife has a Ford Explorer and she always, you know, the, the tack on the left, it, could, it can be replaced by mileage. She always throws it to mileage. I always have it on the tack because I like knowing what the engine's doing, right? So, especially if you're driving, you're cruising, you know, you want to keep it around, you know, on the highway, you want to keep it at like 1500 RPM. So you get the best gas mileage. You know, now she's always has how many miles to empty. <laughs> so she always switches it. So yeah, so everyone stay tuned for the end. I'll be again, doing a giveaway for the uh, Big Tree Tech um, CR6 replacement board for this. Again, to me, if it's an upgrade, you know, compared to, you know, the three versions of the board that Crowley's put out. So the only thing that concerned me again with the big tree tech is that it's turned upside down and then, and the heat sinks, the double sided tape could be better. So. Yeah. Um, and there's one f weird thing about the board is that the, the optical sensor on the, on the gantry, it's actually right. undervolted. So, um, on the stock board, it uh, shows a red light when the gantry isn't near the, the sensor. And on the on the BTT board, uh, it uh, doesn't light up because it's, uh, it doesn't have enough power to do so. Yeah, I also, when I did mine, I used furrows to uh, hook me you know, to attach everything. I cut it off because they tend to leads and I uh, just cut them off. You could just, you don't need to ferrule them. I mean, if, honestly, if you want to, you don't even need to cut them. I'm just not a fan of uh, tin leads on something that's crimped, so. Dog disappeared too. Somewhere in this garage. All right, so you can see that it's uh, still heating the nozzle in the bed. Yeah, and the CR6 isn't the uh, most uh, fast printer to heat up. I think that's also partially due to the, that the bed isn't uh, insulated. And even yeah, my uh, BQB1 has an insulated bed, so I think Creality really could have done that. But yeah, it's also in in my garage. It's uh, about forty five degrees uh, Fahrenheit, so it's it's battling that too. My, um, you know, I'm not going to blame it on Creality for this part because my garage is cold. So. So Henry says, if my stock board has no issues, would the recommend change be a BTT? You know, I I, I think that's all up to you. I, you know, whichever version that you have. You know, I mean, I, I never force anyone to upgrade. It's not my choice. It's yours. You know, so yeah. So this is I'm mean, at. 16 degrees, uh, I don't know if you could see it. Yeah, 16 degrees Celsius in my garage right now. So the, the, the printer is battling the elements here too. So Don's asking, will, the, will that require a specific slicer to change the retraction on the touch screen? No, um, you can do it with the default uh, slicer. Um, 
because it uh, it essentially recognizes e moves. So it's uh, if you have a retraction between, I think uh, it was minus zero and minus zero five and ten, then it will automatically uh, 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 recognize that. What is everyone? Congrats! What are we saying? Congrats to you. what did I miss? What did I miss? Oh, uh, so David, we're putting um, um, the community fir uh, firmware that uh, Sebastian and company have created for the CR6 SE. So um, this will be um, uh, available immediately to uh, to watch again at, right when the stream ends. It'll be posted on this channel. So so you can always rewatch. <laughs> so. Now, you know, I always found this uh, one of the biggest problems with utilizing the string gauge, right, is that you have this uh, <laughs> remnants that sticks around here. But I didn't get to it in time to swipe it off. But Yeah, I have actually a an, uh, an, uh, G-code on my site that, uh, that uh, essentially always homes at uh, 120 degrees and then... Uh, Goes to the site and uh, and happily droops all the filament uh, at the side of your bed, so that might be useful uh, looking into. Because I was also annoyed at uh, that there was also uh, always a little droop of filament at uh, at uh, at, uh, at the bed, and the most annoying thing is that if you print, for instance, with silk uh, uh, filament, then that really affects the bottom of your print. Yeah. And this one's doing a raft. It's the one that came. I, I figure what I'm doing here, everyone, is this is the original test file that came with the CR6. Okay, so I'm not I'm not doing anything that um, that I've already you know like any projects that I've downloaded or created. So figure that we'll just see how this goes down. Right now, that's a very beautiful first layer that's going down. So and I just love how quiet this machine is too. So. Yeah. yeah, although the, the steppers are quite noisy to, to, to what I uh, was accustomed to uh, with the BQB uh, B1 because mm -hmm. um, the first time I turned this on, I immediately posted on Facebook, hey, the steppers are quite noisy. Is, is that supposed to be this way? Because on the BQB1, I can literally not hear the steppers, not even if they go fast. But on this machine, they are, they are a bit louder. Is there an extra piece of G code you add to remove those extra filament? So, so yeah, it's uh, it's on my website. Um, you can search on the homepage from uh, for the word uh, drooping, and then uh, then you'll find it. Yeah, so I just it's, shared your screen here. Uh, it's here. So uh, yeah, so this this is uh, such a first layer artifact that, that you can have. Uh, Due to that, to, the, to that little drop of filament, and yeah. um, this G code is essentially for Cura, and Cura will replace these uh, these placeholders for you. And uh, if you use other slices like uh, Prusa Slicer or Simplify 3D, then you need to replace the, these placeholders with an, uh, another type of placeholder. And then, uh, then they will uh, fill in the temperatures you, you have set in uh, in your slicer. All right. So, Doug is saying it doesn't look that great of first layer. Let me get a zoom in on this for you guys. Okay. Make sure it doesn't hit my camera. You know, you go on and you buy these expensive camera lenses, and sometimes they're just more of a pain in the rear. Than... Oh, this is also 
Doug, it's, it's, it did a, um, or who, who's the one that said it doesn't look like, um, George. Also, this is doing a raft. So yeah, it, you know, it, it lays it down pretty thick for its first layer. So yeah, and I think that that Creality reuses these G code files for all other printers. If I recall yeah. correctly, this has been sliced with uh, Simplify 3D for the CR10. Actually, they don't even re-slice their files for for the CR6. I just uh, put on the the same file uh, uh, for for every 3D printer. Okay, so what I'll do well, as soon as it's starting to do the um, the dog, I'll switch it to one that I've done where it's a off of the Cura, and we'll see how well that first layer goes down. Okay, so I wanted to do one of that was just you know that came with the machine, and then we'll switch to one that I did. So then we could, um, George, then we could see what it really looks like. Sound fair? Yeah, and you also adjust uh, the Z offset with the paper method. So that also ne always needs some first adjustments on the first print. Yeah, and, you know, I kind of like said, let's just roll with it. And so I, you know, because it a after I hit home again, it, I can't get the paper underneath. So, you know, it again, it needed probably some more leveling. So, and, and noticed here that I'm hearing it go up and down. So it looks like they also have a Z hop enabled on this too. Yeah, probably. Yeah, so you just saw it do it right there. So it's hopping around the bed. Yeah, see it? It's just, so. I mean, I, I, I've used a Z hop before when, you know, so it's not like it's to me anything bad. It's just extra movements, so. Yeah, I don't like to use it either. I did have uh, a, a very strange issue on my second CR6 uh, the other day that uh, that, uh, that the nozzle was constantly hitting the print. And I actually just had built the, the, the firmware uh, uh, sl slicer override feature. So I was able to save a few prints with that. But eventually I found out that, that it's some it was somehow the hot hand. And I, I had a spare hot hand uh, lying around, so I just replaced the entire hot hand and uh, the issue was gone. So uh, Louis is asking if you should wait for the BQ BX. I haven't seen what that one looks like. You want to pull that up on your screen, Sebastian, since you're sharing yours? Yeah, uh, I'm actually, uh, I do have the, the direct drive extruder of that BQ, BQ BX uh, right now. Um, because the BQBX, that's uh, that's the uh, kick first Kickstarter printer, and it has this this tiny uh, uh, direct drive extruder, and it then uses that uh, HDMI uh, cable to the to the motherboard. Yeah, yeah so they, this is. They, uh, I I was um, on a stream with someone, and it was so it, could carry, it carries a lot more signal, so. I don't know what the truth of that is by using an HDMI, but it's nice that's an HDMI cable, right? So it's re easily replaceable. I mean, I, it looks yeah, like. Yeah, but, but but I I know from the BQB one is uh, they're using USB-C cable there. Well, you can have, have all kinds of opinions about using mm -hmm. HDMI connectors and USB-C cables, but um, you can just take the USB-C cable from your phone and then. Uh, and then uh, replace it on the printer because it needs to be rated for the currents and the voltages that they use. So my bed wasn't clean, so I had a feeling that was going to happen. So it did. It did fail. That's that's totally on me. So yeah, I mean, I've had uh, quite some issues with the glass bed too. But well, I mean, I've now, I've now flipped it to the other side and you just use a bit of uh, 3D uh, lag to. Uh, to adhere to the bed. I mean, honestly, you can see how dirty this is. I mean, it's it's definitely my own fault. So let me go ahead and clean this real quick. And that's another thing that's, I kind of like it, but I don't, because it feels like you have to jam this glass in there to get it off. But I have now their, uh, their extruder too, that, uh, that's on the BQ uh, BX. And it's uh, it's pretty small. This is compared to an uh, an uh, double A battery. And this is 
it compared to the to the fan shroud of the of the CR6. So you get an idea of the size. And if you if you think that the, this fan shroud weighs 80 grams already, well, this direct drive it weighs about uh, 220 grams. So the weight isn't that much of an issue. But the strain gouge is, of course. So uh, yeah, it comes with uh, with, uh, with, with with a heater cartridge and uh, and everything. But uh, of course, the daughter board of the of the CR6 is uh, is its own beast. So it did require a bit more uh, research to uh, to to figure out how to mount it. But I have already a prototype mount and uh, did the first prints with it. So. Uh, that's been pretty fun, uh, fun week uh, exploring that. And uh, even uh, the, the leveling works on this thing, so. Now, did you say that also uses a strain gauge for leveling? Well, no, the, the CR6 has the strain gauge, but I have uh, mounted it to the strain gauge. Oh, okay. Because the strain gauge is, of course, used for leveling, but also for homing, so. Um, and normally you, you would of course directly attach it to an ex to the X carriage and then use a BL touch or, or something like that next to it. But that's of course not an option on uh, on our printer. And it's pretty fun uh, uh, printing TPU at uh, at 50, uh, 200 millimeters a second. Just to print TPU and not uh, have to worry about the, the speed. It gets your print your big TPU prints uh, done pretty quick. Okay, well, my daughter wants this. No, you know what? I'm not going to do that one. My daughter's into this cricket stuff, and I'm not going to uh, um, do this cricket pen holder just yet. So I'll do that off. That has a lot of supports, and it's a 24 hour print. So let me see what's up also what was on this card. ASM 2750X, uh, if the hot end is all metal. Um, no, it's uh, currently on PTFA uh, lined hot end with, uh, with Capricorn inside. But um, if I understand correctly, they are going to release an all metal throat for it. And I can also imagine that existing throats also would work on this, uh, on this uh, extruder. It's a, a pretty cool looking extruder. I mean, so. Yeah, it's really tiny. D this part is just a stepper motor. And then uh, there are two screws at uh, at this side, and you can just t take the entire thing off, and uh, and uh, get your filament remains and uh, and whatever whatever to uh, remove it. All right. So I'm doing the the Maker's Muse tolerance test on here. I'm doing that. I'm printing that right now. So I'm just waiting for it to heat up. So. And like I said to everyone, you know, this this printer passed a lot of my my you know the the tests and everything from the beginning. It's just you know, the concerns were there, you know, for this one. You know, it just seemed like they had a lot of time to get this printer, you know, with a lot less issues out. <laughs> so So, uh, yeah, let, let's hope uh, Creality has learned from this, and uh, yeah, we will see how it will go with uh, with the 3D print now. Mm -hmm. Scoff is, of course, of uh, a bit of a more experimental project. So, but uh, yeah, we will see how it goes. Um, so, let's see here. How about we do the giveaway in about ten minutes? Um, so. It'll be a giveaway for the Big Tree Tech, and you have to be U.S. only. Sorry, because I am paying for shipping on this. So unless you have Amazon, then I can work out with something for you for a, a gift card for your region. So 
So I know Henry is like in Canada. And Henry always wins, though. Every time I see Henry on a live stream, that guy wins all the time. Henry, how much? How many printers have you won on live streams? Honestly. I mean, because I, I've seen him win multiple on Creality's. And then he won one on, um, I think, on um, Curses. So I think this guy has won more printers than he's purchased. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, everyone, man, everyone loves the air firmware, man. So really appreciate you jumping on the stream to show us how easy it is to get on there. So honestly, just to, I don't know about that, Henry. I, it just feels like you're a constant winner out there. Uh, I, I think you're a little, you're hiding it from us. <laughs> Well, maybe it's just all the other little prizes I see you winning. So, I won T-shirts. I got, I got actually a whole pile of stuff right behind me for a giveaway. I got to do something. Um, yeah, it's just a matter of you know because a lot of the stuff I have to pay for shipping myself, and anything that I basically I've won, I'm giving away for on a my um, giveaway. So. Oh, look at that. See, look at that. Community firm firmware has improved my experience with the CR6 big time. So, look at that. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. So, we'll let this maker's muse go. And what's nice about doing it on, um, on the Cura, you know, it does the swipe for the filament, the purge line. So... Yeah. Okay. See, there he goes. I win small prizes a lot, honestly. Okay. See, I, I, I told you. <laughs> like every time they spin that darn wheel, I say it's Henry again. <laughs> so. So let's see how many people are in the chat. Just say I'm here, so we know about how many people will be uh, here to enter for the giveaway. Just say, I'm here. And this way we have an idea of how many people will be entered. It says it's got 47 people watching. So some people drop off and the uh, you know, I, I think we'll see if Henry wins again. <laughs> yes. um. There you go. So I'm doing the, the Maker's Muse um, tolerance test on here. So that'll give us a good idea of the first layer. And then once it gets down to the first layer, then we'll kick it off and we'll do that giveaway. Henry's not here. OK. <laughs> so <laughs> sorry, Henry. I had to just point that out. I've been, a lot of, I've been on almost, it feels like every live stream with you. And it just. I see that wheel. I'm like, gosh darn it, he won again. <laughs> oh, so it's like really late for Sebastian, so we're going to cut it off uh, pretty soon. So. so, what time is it for you right now? About a quarter of uh, before ten, so it's not uh, it's not too late yet. <laughs> I know uh, Growbox and I uh, did some uh, pretty late nights uh, developing the firmware. So 
looks like Okay, so there, so you can see how it's thinned out, right? Let me zoom in here. See how it's, I've had this problem with this printer for a very long time. Yeah, I think you yeah. might have a factory reset it when it was behaving uh, strange uh, just after the, the leveling sequence, I think. Okay, so this, okay, from the beginning, from with a uh, you know the original board, this board, I've always had where my the, this one side of the bed has been this way. So you know, I, what I'll do is I'll do some more tweaking with it and throw some pictures on there. So yeah, see, it's not it's not level. You can see how it's it's uh it's dragging it. So then I said clump on the end of the. Henry is asking if uh, M420 needs to be added to the G code. No, that's not, not necessary in the community firmware. But you need to do that in the stock firmware because it doesn't automatically recall the mesh. But I noticed that when I did stop it, though, it raised up the, the hot end and then parked it. Yeah. And that's what it, that was my original gripe with the machine. It didn't do that. It just dragged it across the side of the bed. Yeah, many people have a scratch bed uh, thanks to that uh, bug in the stock firmware. They did eventually fix it, but uh, yeah, by then uh, hundreds of people have experienced it, I think. All right, so let me, uh, let me just stop here. What I'll do is, um, we go. You're on mute. All right, how's that? That's a lot better. Okay, yeah. It's, uh, so, you know, I, I've i had that side of, of the bed has been a problem since day one. So I'll get back to Sebastian and see, if, you know, I'll, I'll tweak that uh, Z offset a little bit or into another level. So it's just, it could be just something with the bed itself, but it's, it's always smushed on the left side. So it's, it's been like that since I've unboxed it and with the BTT board and this. So uh, I'll, I'll do some tweaking on it. So if it's gone through this whole process, maybe it's something that I need to look underneath. So yeah, you can uh, just yeah. start to level it again and uh, see how it goes. Yeah. So all right, so last question for Sebastian. When will connected with Octoprint? Okay, so if you want to just read that real quick there, Sebastian, from Henry. Yeah, uh, that that bit accuracy uh, display is essentially from the the detailed progress pl plugin, and you can uh, disable that in the plugin settings because it's essentially saying, well, uh, the, the accuracy of the time uh, estimation isn't very good. And the, the plugin developer decided to show that by default. So that's where the bad accuracy message comes from. It's not from Marlin. It's from uh, from, from your Octoprint pl plugin. All right. Let's see here. All right. Let me go to me. This is my first time using Nightbot, everyone. So. Let me just see how many active we have here. And I 
All right. So let's just do one more roll call to make sure everyone's online here. Say I am here, and then I go put a keyword in the chat for the giveaway. Again, this is US only. Unless you have Amazon, then I'll credit you the gift card for that. Okay. For the CR6 SEBTT board. So, what is the reef safe filament? I've never heard of uh, what is reef safe filament. Never heard of that. And if um, say that you don't have a CR6 SE, what I'll do is I'll um, make it to where it's a uh, some type of board within that price. So let's just make it fair. So I know that not everyone that's on the stream has one. So and is here just either to support myself or Sebastian or just to say hi. So, so does that sound fair to everyone? All right. So what we're going to do is um, So I want everyone to type in this CR6 SKR in the stream who wants to be part of the giveaway. And then I'll have Nightbot select it without the period. I don't understand why I did that. So, so, so exactly like what the C. I type it out wrong. So CR6 dash SKR. I saw a typo by someone. Uh, who, who typed it out wrong? David Wilson, you typed it out wrong. <laughs> And we'll let this go for a minute or two, and then. And then um, once the winner is picked, just send me an email. My email is on my YouTube channel under the information. So we'll give it an We'll give it another uh, minute. You're not going to enter, Sebastian? <laughs> <laughs> I have enough boards here. <laughs> Yeah, I got I, I have a spare uh, four or five two board. I have a four or five three board, and I have two SKR six boards. So, yeah. The only thing I don't have a spare of is uh, is the hot and uh, daughter board. If that ever becomes an issue. Yeah, I mean these are all giveaways for when I do my giveaway stream. So. All right, one more minute and then we'll run it. Oh, no problem, Henry. I'm glad that you could uh, make it. And uh, Henry has done some pretty cool things. He's done some what's called Lost PLA and some other things. Or actually it was, um, no, it was Lost Wax, if I remember right, not Lost PLA. So, you, you know, for, I don't know if it was pewter or not what he did, so. Um, Mike, it's if you have Amazon, 
it will, I would just credit you the, the money. So it's not, so if it's USA, I could just put it in. So if, if you have Amazon, I'll just send you a gift card. So, so if uh, Mike, if you, if you have Amazon of some type, then you're still in. It's equivalent to the price of the board. So. Yeah, Marco says she, that I can make my own hot end board now, and that's uh, that's true. We uh, Marco reverse engineered the the entire schema of the of the hot end board, and uh, it's now open on GitHub for anyone to uh, to replicate. So that's uh, also pretty fun. All right, so everyone in. So let's uh, roll with it. Felicitate right. SMP. SMP 146. Uh, just hit reply on to here. Sorry, Henry, you didn't win. I, I guarantee you were actually in the list. I saw your name. So. Now let's give uh, SMP a minute to reply. Otherwise, I'll spin it again. Ah, all right. So, so if you go onto my YouTube page, click on the information about me. My my uh, email is there. Um, I prefer if people just send me their information that way instead of doing a you know this wheel thing. So, um, so uh, any further questions for uh, for myself or Sebastian? It's <laughs> Henry's other account. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Let's see uh, after the delay. So, all right. Uh, well, I definitely appreciate uh, Sebastian taking his time out to walk us through the process of doing the firmware update. As uh, you see, it's a uh, it. It's amazing how, you know, just copying some files over to a formatted SD card, putting into one slot and upgrades, then putting into the other slot behind display upgrades. And uh, yeah, it's it was honestly, Sebastian, it, it's probably one of the easiest uh, firmware updates I've seen. So, you know, being, it, it took longer to take the darn display apart than anything. So. Yeah, we, we try to make it as easy as possible, but uh, it's not going to get much, much easier than this. <laughs> yeah, so uh, what's the next big feature coming? Some teasing, RV is asking. Yeah, so the next uh, features will be uh, a guided e-step calibration. Uh, so that will really walk you through to uh, through measuring and uh, the filament, and uh, then after that, uh, calculating the e-steps for you. And um, what we also will have is uh, that you can override the firmware, uh, uh, that you can override the slicer retractions. So that's pretty fun when you uh, have some uh, stringy filament or you uh, try to get a TPU string free. And um, we have PID tuning in the pipeline. And I don't know if we can make that for, for the sixth release, but uh, we're also looking at improving the overall menu structure of the of the firmware. Henry Lin is asking if the BQ H2 extruder mod released is anytime soon. Yeah, and so uh, watch the social media channels uh, on that or my website. Uh, I was actually uh, just before the stream writing our uh, the the guide on how to install this uh, this extruder. So uh, it will be online pr probably tomorrow with uh, with all the designer files. And uh, I'll also uh, upload my mess I've made in uh, Infusion 360 for anyone to uh, to see and uh, adjust uh, and remix as, uh, as needed. Romeo is asking if there are any plans on the Ender 3 V2. Sorry, I don't have that printer. But uh, 
the firmware is quite married with uh, with uh, with the screen firmware, so to speak. So it's not an uh, interview modification. Uh, Fair says hi. <laughs> <laughs> David Wilson always likes to see bear, so uh, he, he loves saying hi to everyone. <laughs> As he has his fur all over me, he's a heavy dog. Yeah, it's, I mean, you know, I, I guess it would probably be a little bit different if Creality sent, sent you machines and, you know, but again, it's like, where do you draw the line of saying, hey, I'm doing all this stuff. Um, I mean, if they send you a machine, I think that's a little bit, you know, like I mentioned, I had a, uh, someone asking me to retract a video. They're not a partner of mine. I purchased a product. You have no say of what I say, of what I have. If you're a partner, you're working with me on, and then we could do a collaboration of what the problem is before I release a video, but you don't get that luxury, right? So. Tiny Machine 3D shows the bed level mesh. Any chance it will be available for, oh, for the community firmware. Yeah, I, it's a shame that, you know, uh, you, you've, I saw like a Tiny Machine thing when you were navigating. Um, do you work with Tiny Machines at all? Um, they've based their firmware on, uh, on ours and rebranded it. So, uh, but I think uh, they are now working on uh, getting their changes back into ours, so. It will probably be part of the next release. Well, th thank you for joining there, uh, Dinan. I hopefully I didn't bash that name. I'm not the best with uh, pronunciations of names. So, so well, thanks for coming on. So, um, so so PID tuning. You know, I mean. <clears throat> You know, I mean, I, I always do mine just through, um, I just hook up the computer and do my PID tuning that way, so. Yeah, PID tuning will be part of the next release, so. Uh, That's cool. Then you can just do it from the touch screen. Uh, so Tom is asking if uh, it's safe to use the USB port on the VTT, because I haven't hooked up mine yet. So have you hooked up yours? Yeah, I have both printers on uh, on USB, um, but um, let's say it should be safe. But I understood from someone on Facebook that the the twenty four uh, volt that's passed through the USB ground might actually not be a motherboard issue, but rather an insulation issue of the bed that the uh, that the bed essentially essentially yeah. sorts through the ground. And then so, no motherboard can can help against uh, that issue. So yeah, it's uh, <laughs> unfortunately you'll be having to use a, a tape underneath. So I'll do another stream, a live stream, just covering two simple fixes. One will be for that. Um, so it's using a tape underneath. It's actually at the pinch points of where the bed is mounted. So and that's where yeah, Sebastian was saying that's where a lot of people are using. Um, um, tape underneath to insulate it from happening. So, yeah, that's, yeah, that's so far I haven't had that. And so I'll do a, a quick live stream of fixing two issues, which is very simple for the, hopefully simple for the filament runout sensor, which not only Sebastian has put down, but a lot of other people down have put down in the community, which we, I just don't understand why Creality just couldn't, they're addicted to hot glue, so why couldn't they do it there? So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? So, I mean, they, they own, must own some type of stock with 3M or something for hot glue. So say, hey, let's just keep on using this stuff. And then, you know, the tape underneath the bed, so. I'll do a quick live stream on something like that and um, just two more fixes. And I think between all that, this machine is really, I mean, it's like I said, the potential is there. Never really, 
it was the response from Creality that concerned me. So that's not how you handle things. So, yep. Yeah. Captain yeah. Team. Yep. I, I almost put, put the, the the daughter board of my uh, hot end apart, uh, trying to remove the, the the glue from the from the connectors. So that was a pretty fun uh, uh, 15 minutes of removing glue with uh, with with some pliers. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the thing is, is I I I, I'm, I used to just scoring it. You know, especially with that board, I'm not going to use again. So, and that's why I said on during my swap out, the swap of the board it was. The longest part, even after adding the ferrules, was getting the connectors off. <laughs> so, yeah, and I don't understand why they do, they do that because um, uh, I know that, the, for instance, the Anet uh, ET4 Pro, which uh, which I, I've also had for for a time, um, it has get gotten quite a bit of criticism and uh, on the firmware mainly, but they do use locking connectors on the main board. So you have no chance of of getting those connectors loose during travel or vibrations or anything. The electrical work work is quite all right on that uh, on that printer. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's kept on tape underneath, and then you take apart the filament sensor and you just add two dabs of hot glue. And that's typical. And, and then honestly, you know, me, you know, if Creality fixes their main board and those two things. You know, my something's going on with the bed on mine, and I, I see a lot of people don't have the same problem I have. So now with uh, Sebastian's, you know, firmware fix, one of the key problems I had was that if you hit stop, it just dragged it across. It didn't lift and park. You know, like you see almost every other printer do. So, and yeah, now and that's always that issue. And it's pretty funny because uh, if you recall from your unboxing, the first thing you see is that uh, that uh, A4 piece of paper that says "Don't use G28XY in your uh, in your uh, start G code, right?" Mm -hmm. So, um, but that's exactly what Creality put in their firmware as a stop command when you stop from uh, SD printing. They have a they had a G28XY that that exactly caused that scr scratching. It's I mean, really uh, remarkable how that uh, how that must have go gone. <laughs> it, it was such a simple fix, right? And you saw what it, it, it happened in my live stream. It happened again when I in my review, and then it happened again after I replaced the board. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then I put your firmware on, and and it's all fixed. Amazing. So. Yeah, so I'll, I'll get back to you, Sebastian, on the leveling. I'll send um, some pictures to you, making sure. Again, I think it's something with the bed itself. Oh, it is so it's so far off on the left hand side, and you saw how it just. I mean, it's it's practically invisible, you know, for how how hard it's pushing down. So compared to the rest of the yeah, bed. just try leveling again and uh, see how that goes. Yeah. Uh, any chance of a customer Ender Five series firmware? I don't know, Sebastian. Do you have a Ender Five printer? No, sorry. I only have two uh, CR6 printers. <laughs> <laughs> Creality should probably send me one. <laughs> yeah, for, I mean, honestly, you've been more of a community help than most, you know. So, yeah, I did recommend uh, Max a Diamond of using a heat gun to do it. You know, to take off to at least soften it enough to. The problem is, is getting it's such a tight area is to once you heat it up, you got to be really quick to remove it. So, all right. Um, anything else? Because um, we'll end it like in, in like a couple more minutes here. I actually found, found some connectors on the PCB of a ventilator on a 170 metric ton tank last week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and that's the thing, you know, I'm not into real like miniatures and doing all these things, weird things on a printer, but I'm starting to do it now, but I'm more of like a functionality type person for printing out things, you know, so. 
as you can see, I used to be really into RC cars. <laughs> so that one I had I've had for 35 years. And then that one is about 40 years old. I'm not going to replace my stock of Schroeder. Um, honestly, I don't find it having any type of issues. Typically, and unlike the Ender 5 Plus, where I did all these upgrades to, it was just little things I just saw that I wanted to improve. Didn't mean that everyone should do. I, when it comes to upgrades, I've I find that the CR6 SE doesn't need many out of the box for function. You know, I mean, there's some um, guide, you know, the filament guide prints that people are doing between the runout sensor and the extruder. I think that's helpful um, because it is a big gap between. You know, the biggest problem I had with the Ender 5 Plus is that you have to reach behind the whole darn thing to replace the filament, and it was such a pain in the rear. Here, everything is pretty close, and it's in kind of almost in front of you a little bit, um, but I don't see, you know, some people are replacing the extruders with, uh, you know, the, the basic Creality aluminum ones. You know, I've had no problem with my extruder at all, so... Oh, no problem. I appreciate you guys tuning in. So um, I, again, I wanted to thank, uh, you know, thank Sebastian. I felt that this is, you know, his baby and it, I didn't feel like it was justified for me to release a video on something that he did. And I figured, you know, it'd be best to have him on the stream and give credit where credit's due. So it's different than just doing an unboxing of a product and then doing a review. Um, but this is so much hard work, and I believe that people should do things like this as long as they're willing. You know, I reached out to Sebastian just a couple days ago, and I really appreciate you taking the time and helping the community out with this printer um, and, you know, and and the hard work that you put in. So, yeah, and I also want to thank the, the community for the, for the feedback we have had. Uh, we've also had some don donations, so I also want to thank... Uh, those people who have uh, donated uh, to us, that, uh, that's also an, uh, always a big motivation. And uh, and I know uh, uh, Growbox uh, bought some hardware uh, to help with the touchscreen from those donations. And uh, I bought an uh, Octoprint uh, Raspberry Pi from that. So that has also helped uh, uh, invest back in the, in the firmware development on that. And uh, it's always uh, to see uh, all the nice messages uh, of the people who enjoy working uh, with the firmware. So I really want to thank also uh, everyone for the, yeah, for using it. Yeah. Um, yeah, Jeff, I haven't done any flexibles. So I've done only PLA on mine. So yeah, so if you're experiencing that, you know, yeah, I could see where it could be slipping. So um, you know, it's uh, with the dual, dual gear, I could see that, uh, with flexibles, you know, that's one thing I, when I went with the direct drive, dual gears, um, micro Swiss for my Ender 5 Plus. It still would sometimes, at least you would see it bunch up when it did, but that's due to a clogged nozzle. It wasn't due to the shooter not, you know, working. So, yeah, I did some flexibles on the CR6. Um, uh, TPU Find 95A is going pretty well, uh, up to 14 millimeters per second. If you have the have the right uh, right temperature, but uh, 85A is already pretty under extruding in my experience, so that uh, needs more tuning. But uh, it's pretty going pretty well in compared to some other extruders uh, I've had. All right, well that's what I call it. So I appreciate everyone tuning in, and I really appreciate uh, Sebastian for taking the time out to answer a lot of questions, walk through the simple process. You know, it took me longer to find some things and, uh, you know, to get the correct SD card. But as you saw, once you put everything on the SD card to put the files on, you do two updates. And you update your main board first, and then you do the to your display. That whole process was under 10 minutes. Very fast, straightforward. You have a lot more usability now with the machine and display interface. I mean, it looks so much better, too. So it gives you a lot of information at your fingertips. 
that you know that I like to see. Um, and and we can look forward to some more updates from Sebastian and crew, which is great. So um, so and um, SMP, send me that email. Otherwise, you know you don't get it. So. But uh, I've seen you on several streams before, so I, I do know you. So, all right. Well, I really appreciate everyone tuning in to Tripods Garage. So everyone have a pleasant rest of your weekend. Um, there's some football, I think, that's still playing here in the United States. I really am not watching too much because my Bears lost. So they always <laughs> lose. They're always in a rebuilding season. So, um, but, uh, and uh, you know what? Have a great wonderful rest of your weekend, night, or daytime, whenever you decide to catch up and watch this video again. So thanks again to Sebastian and everyone that's joined the stream to make it a wonderful stream. Thank thanks. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.